All right, once again, it's Mike Pelusi here, uh, talking about exploring your neighbourhood with your camera. And during these times of COVID virus, uh, we are doing, we probably have a little bit more time to do so. Not everybody, but some of us. And there's also a good chance that we might be under a bit of stress and overwhelm, uh, and probably a bit anxious about how COVID's going. And so it is a great, actually, a great opportunity to get out outdoors and walk around and in this case I'm going to talk about walking around your camera in parks your local park and parks you may not have been to before now it's a very simple premise here uh, that you are into travel I guess everybody who likes to follow my uh, workshops uh, likes the idea of travel and do a lot of travel themselves so they might you might be feeling a bit frustrated about that uh, it's not surprising, we're a bit restricted. But as I said in the first uh, 15 minute talk I did, why, why not explore your own backyard, your own neighborhood, your own city, your own area uh, with new eyes and as, as if you are a tourist in your own place. You're a tourist who is traveling around seeing new things all the time. We can do that too. We may be familiar with where we live, but there's lots of things we're not familiar with. So this is all about basically walking around your neighborhood, driving to a near park or, or wherever it might be and taking photos. So we'll get straight into it. Just very briefly who I am, just for people who may not know me. Uh, my name is Michael Polisi. I'm a photographer and writer and along with my wife, we travel the world. Or we're, well, not quite at the moment, of course. We travel around taking photos and writing up these places. We've written over 80 books and uh, we enjoy our, our travel lifestyle. So in saying that, because we're enjoying our travel lifestyle, uh, it sounds like we're probably suffering at the moment. But no, what we're doing is we're exploring our local area. Now, this is what I call travel mindset at home. What we're actually doing here is uh, creating the same sort of travel mindset we had when we were away. When we were away uh, in a new place, uh, away from familiar people that we know and friends, we tend to do things differently. We tend to be much more curious. We like to take on different things that we normally wouldn't do at home. We often take photos, uh, probably not the sort of thing we take do much at home. Uh, we are basically you know, traveling and therefore not caught up with uh, work and all that kind of thing, the stresses of work. And so what I'm trying to say here is that that concept of mindset when we're traveling can be transferred to mindset, the same mindset at home. You can explore your place with new eyes, basically. So traveling mindset at home is just about creating that same feeling that you have when you're away, but at home. Now, first of all, there's two ways of doing this. Uh, is the familiar, looking at, at uh, places with new eyes is what I like to call it. Places that are familiar with you, you might go there daily, walking the dog, for example, in a local park. You do the same routine every day. You are probably not really in the moment at that time. You're doing it because you have to walk the dog um, but your mind is really full on thinking about work, thinking about family, what the, all the stresses of today, the upcoming day, if you walk walking in the morning, uh, you're certainly not in tune with what's going on. And then on top of that, you might have COVID worries on top of that, which is adding to the stress and overwhelm. People are suffering at the moment. So a walk in the park should be a pretty pleasant experience, but for a lot of us, we're just caught up with it caught up with all the trauma. So it's interesting what I'm going to talk about here is the when you go to your local park there's probably a lot of things you're missing you, that you don't see because you're so caught up in this tunnel vision and what it is about is to get us open to what's around us to appreciate what's around us. So for starters uh, if you're taking if you're taking photographs of your phone put your phone on flight mode to stop all this stuff coming through that's going to be distracting. You want to actually be in, in the park, your local park, with um, 
clar clarity. You want to have a clear head. You want to be able to see things and be in the moment. Slow down, breathe. That's what I always do. If I'm going to a local park, something that's even familiar to us, I will, first of all, before taking photographs, take some deep breaths. You want to de-stress. You are probably a bit hyped up. You, so you want to be able to de-stress and take some of that anxiousness away. One of the ways of doing it is to deliberately slow down, look around, take some deep breaths. We show a breathe all the time. So I, it, I think that taking some deep breaths and clearing the head and getting the circulation going is what's required here before you even get started. Go get the mind right. One of the things that uh, often goes by the wayside is the um, your senses tend to get dulled. Let's face it, when you're in tunnel vision, you're not really smelling the sweet smells of flowers, uh, literally smelling the roses. You, you're certainly not hearing the birds singing and the, the, the sounds that are made around the place, like magpies, that kind of thing. The beautiful sounds that often get caught up with you, well, dismissed, basically. You're none of that. So what I suggest doing is to just look around, stand still, take some deep breaths, smell what you're smelling, uh, and hear uh, what hear the birds, hear the uh, all, the wind rustling through the trees, the leaves blowing around, all sorts of things, which normally would not happen if you are in tunnel vision. So you're pre you're pre preoccupying yourself with uh, new things to change that mindset. And the other thing, that's just your familiar places. So you're going around searching with new eyes uh, for, for new things to see which takes you out of the distraction, distraction you're under. That's one way of doing it. But the other way, and this really is a, a travel mindset at work here, it's a bit like when you're overseas, so, say looking at a, discovering a new place, like walking in a park in London, for example, you're seeing new things all the time. So you've got a different mindset. Why not bring that mindset back to, to back home to Perth and explore new places? And that's what I talk about here is you, a lot of the parks, it's amazing the amount of parks around which you have not visited. I guarantee in your local area, there'll be places you haven't seen and visited. And they can be visited with new eyes. <clears throat> and you take the camera and phone along as a bonus, but basically it's all about exploring new places, getting that travel mindset going, even though you can't travel anywhere really as yet, although it is getting closer. Um, and so, that's, that's what I mean by that. One of the things uh, you, to do if you try to find new places is to actually go on a map, uh, Google Maps or Apple Maps, and look for green bits, basically open green areas, uh, which, is, which we're very, very lucky in Perth, we've got heaps of them, um, usually in very good places, very picturesque, and choose somewhere where you haven't been before, and just go out there and have a look. Try something different. Um, also, you can go on a, a, a website called Trails WA, which is one of the websites that we set up for, for walking trails. We help create this. And uh, then you look on the Trails WA site for trails near me. And when you do that, you'll find all these different trails that you basically would not have thought existed, let alone walked on. And they are almost always in good areas, interesting places to go to. So you can use this Trails WA website to uh, have a look around and uh, use it as a guide to find new places. And when you're exploring new places, uh, it's amazing what you find. Even, even the most weirdest places. Look, we were some time ago, we were exploring a little area around the side streets around Scarborough and came across this basically a field of poppies. It could have been anywhere, it could have been in France. Uh, these poppies were covering this vacant block. It was un unbelievable. And so obviously it was a great opportunity to take some photographs. I took a whole heap of photographs there. And for a while there I was lost in this field of poppies. It was just a sensational thing. That was something we never knew existed. It's because we had a sort of uh, urge to explore our own area, 
we discovered a new place. Just a couple of techniques. We're running out of time. We only got 15 minutes to do this. And um, one of the good techniques we I use all the time in parks is not to stand in one spot and take a photograph in a static angle, but to move around, take shots looking upwards, like this photograph of, uh, of up into this tree with the beautiful lights created by that. So you're always looking for different angles and trying to make things more interesting. And, and that, by doing that, you're actually exploring because you're actually seeing more. Uh, the other thing uh, we do uh, often play with is big depth of field. So just a quick bit about uh, depth, big depth of field is simply sharp foreground, sharp middle ground, sharp background. So it's a landscape's favorite tool. Basically you get it, it's a beautiful depth feeling in your photographs. This is just a bit of a teaser to show you what it will be soon like when we're able to travel and camp anywhere we like. At the moment we can't. Now that, uh, what I'm showing, showing there is the, the way the, the uh, lines of the sand dunes, or the, the sand go, goes towards the, uh, our camping setup, creating a bit of depth. So this is a very good thing to uh, work with. Uh, if you just use your wide angle lens on your camera, um, you will find that you've got natural depth of field, big depth of field, so you can get a lot in focus. I won't get into a lot of detail, it's, we haven't got enough time. Photographing textures, get in close, just explore. It's all about exploring new places or even familiar places to get in tight and get photographs of textures and things that normally would be not even noticed in real life, but are fantastic things to photograph and get yourself, get your head out of the space of being stressed. And there's a classic shot of uh, a tree stump showing a pattern. That's what I'm talking about. Getting in close, all these patterns are everywhere and they're fascinating things to. to chase down and photograph. Textures and shadows uh, come in all forms and leaf matter, especially in autumn, is a great place. Hyde Park's a great place for this. We can, all the leaves are lying on the ground and you get, create patterns and, and all sorts of things in your photography. It makes things very interesting. So do that. And, and also about getting in close, you, you uh, get to compose your photographs and get some really strong images just by not just taking wide shots all the time, but getting in close, like this park shot. And also magic hour, morning. Now I'm talking about half an hour before sunrise, half an hour after sunrise. Sunrise I think is a great time to be in parks because there's usually a bit of mist around and the lights are a lot softer, the low angle light, so you get some beautiful interesting light coming through, soft and uh, like this back light coming through, it creates this really ethereal type images works beautifully on leaves and trees and parks and that sort of thing where you can get that kind of translucent sort of beautiful light basically. So early mornings are great so for this kind of photography of course you can go in the evening but uh, I love early mornings in parks in particular. And I think that'll just about do it. Um, we will, um, I'll be going talking about another subject in this um, part of our series about travel mindset at home and uh, for now we'll leave it.